Welcome back guys. In the last video, we talked about some of the different setups that you can opt for depending on your requirements. We also provided a TLDR setup that's suitable for most households. So if you don't want to watch the entire three parts, just watching that summarized version should be good enough for you. In this video, we are going to go through some of the setups that we don't recommend, especially in a new house and the reasons why we say that. After that, we will go through our own network setup and also the network test speeds around the house. But before that, here's a message from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Home Trust, Singapore's leading interior design portal. Looking for an interior designer for your home? Fret not. Home Trust allows you to find unbiased reviews and design ideas from the best interior designers in Singapore. Simply select your house type, budget, and design style and you will find tons of IDs that will fit your criteria. You can easily browse pictures of completed projects and read customer reviews on the different IDs before making your big decision. Head on over to HomeTrust.sg or click the link in the description box below to find out more. Now back to the video. Okay, now that we've gone through the different setups, there's a few different devices or setups I don't recommend, especially for a new house that haven't gone through any reno. Some of them can be considered if it's not a new house, like it's a resale or if it's a rental where you don't really want to touch the cabling or you can't do the cabling. Okay, so the first option that I don't recommend uh, is to have one router with a Wi-Fi extender. Uh, this is what many people opt, opt for when they initially start with the ISP's basic internet router in the living room, right? Like uh, what most people will do is they will put the router, the modem, everything in the DB box and then expect everything to work. This is not the case. And shortly after, they realized that, hey, I'm not getting good Wi-Fi signal in the bedroom. I'm not getting good Wi-Fi signal in the in the study. So what they do is that they just go and buy things like Wi-Fi extenders, and then they just plug it anywhere, and then, oh, hey, I have Wi-Fi now. So why I don't recommend this is that the issue with this approach is that most Wi-Fi extenders are repeaters. So there's this, I guess, a little bit technical. Uh, the device will listen to the signal from the main router and then it's going to repeat the signal to the rest of the house. So what happens if the device receives a bad signal from the router? It's already not a very good signal from the router. What it's going to do is going to repeat the bad signal to the rest of the house. So yeah, you might argue that okay, it's not really the tip-top condition of your networking, but because you're a new house, right, why would you opt for a less than ideal connection? So this is why I don't think it's ideal, especially for a new house. If it's a new house, just get everything done right. The other option that I kind of don't recommend in a new house is to use power line adapters for LAN and sometimes for Wi-Fi. So what are these, right? These are actually quite popular for people who wants to have wired connection but don't have the infrastructure for it. So power line adapters are devices that make use of the electrical cabling in your house to transmit the data from one to another and to extend the network. So in a sense, let's say I plug in a power line adapter in my DB box and another power line adapter in my study, I technically will have a connection between the DB box and the study. It kind of works if you want a cable connection. However, because our context is a new BTO, right, a new apartment, where you can kind of shift the network ports anyway during renovation and HDB has given you all your tools, right? All, all rooms have one Ethernet port anyway, including your bomb shelter. So this doesn't make sense to use the power line adapter anymore. So however, if it's not a new house, like it's a resale and then you don't want to do too much uh, renovation or the previous owner closed up the whole data point, right? Or if you can't touch the cabling, like if it's a rental house and then the, the owner says, hey, don't touch any of the cables. Now what power line adapters can do is to help you extend your network easily provided the electrical cabling is not too old or like the adapter speeds are appropriate so some of the cases i've seen is that uh, people see this cheap um powerless power line adapter and then they buy it not knowing that it's rated for like 300 megabits per second but they're complaining they have a one gigabit per second network and then they're like hey why am i not getting the signal because they bought the wrong speed rating so yes this is one of the issue that most people get next up i will bring you through our own networking setup okay so this is my db box and here's a quick tour of what's my setup so this is the fiber termination point and then this is the optical network terminal or the modem 
uh, ignore the zone fee is some other thing. So the these two should be the same uh, for most houses like this termination point and the ONT. And then it's this modem is linked to my router. This is the AX88U, um, pretty big router, and uh, the reason why I went for this router is because I wanted a more powerful router and th theoretically this could service the whole house but um, my my own setup is a little bit of, of an overkill think of it as a normal router is good enough so this router is connected to these switches the D1 to D6 switch uh, not really a switch but this D1 to D6 thing that I was talking about so D1 is our study, D2 is where my TV is, and then D3 is the spare bedroom that we have. So all this three is linked to my router. So this particular router is providing Wi-Fi to the living room and dining room and the kitchen. So even though it's in a DB box where it's usually not a very good idea, it's still enough because I have another router inside. Uh, please forgive my cable management not enough space so yeah this is my DV box so this is D2 um, or the living room one which is linked to my TV and my PlayStation console over here you can see that the D2 Ethernet port the D2 Ethernet port is linked all the way to my this network switch here one port goes in it extends like four more so this first one is linked to my TV and then the other one is linked to my PlayStation console. So so now my both my TV and PlayStation console has direct LAN connection. So yeah, our this is this network switch is by TP Link and this is TL SG105 for five port switch. You can I'll link all the devices I have below so you guys will know exactly what we bought and yeah. So basically, uh, that's about it for the living room. So this is my spare bedroom and it's a little bit messy. But if you can see over there, that's where D3 is. And then D3 is specifically linked to this particular PC here where Cheryl does her streaming or at least tries to do her streaming and stuff. So pardon the cable management because we didn't really plan much for this uh, setup it just happens and yeah so now this PC has direct LAN connection as well to the router so for example if you want uh, uh, two or more PCs in this room that wants the direct LAN connection you can just do the same thing as what I did in the living room where you just buy a switch so this is D1 and this is linked directly to our router here in the study, this is the AX58U or AX3000 depending on um, brand deals and whatever some stores have but it's, it's essentially the same thing uh, I will also link this down below and if you see these two ports here one is to my PC and then the other one is to Cheryl's PC so we are, our PC setup is like side by side so this makes sense for us and um, Basically, this gives Wi-Fi to the main bedroom, the master bedroom, uh, the study area, and also uh, yeah, the remaining areas where the living room can't cover. So this is essentially all, all our networking setup. And so the reason why, um, if you look at it carefully, it's actually two ASUS routers. And what ASUS can do is this thing called AI Mesh so basically they transform your routers into a mesh like setup and basically your routers work like mesh so just take uh, what we recommended for mesh and yeah our house is also using mesh the reason why we want routers and then act like mesh instead of just getting mesh routers directly is because uh, particularly for ASUS routers I like to play with their settings and mesh doesn't allow me to do that like i like to mess with their firmware i like to mess with the configuration i like to mess with the the different settings that most people don't care about but um yeah so if i want to do that i can't do that with the typical mesh routers where the only thing they do is give you wi-fi and then that's it so that's what most people want anyway that's why we went for 
the two Asus routers. It's uh, an overkill for sure. Like I don't need such a good router, but you know, life happens. I'll also show you the speed test of this setup in I guess different areas, so you can see what uh, what kind of speed you can get. Here are some test speeds around the house. Firstly, the speed of my PC which is connected directly via LAN. We have a 1 gigabit per second plan from MyRepublic and according to MyRepublic, this is the typical download speeds. Uh, they used to cap the upload speed but it seems like the cap was lifted. So as you can see, the LAN connection speed is around the typical LAN speed as advertised which is around 940 megabit per second. Next test is from my phone beside the router. You can see the speed is a lot slower than having a dedicated LAN connection. So therefore, I recommend using LAN as much as possible for fixed devices like your TV and like other stuff. Here's the Wi-Fi speed from the main bedroom with the door closed. Still fast enough for typical usage while lying on the bed and doing some web browsing before you sleep. Next is the speed from my master bedroom toilet with the doors closed. So there's additional layers of obstruction this time. But as you can see, the speed is still good enough. This next one is from the kitchen and service yard area, which is arguably the worst uh, possible signal in the house. The speed is hovering around 550 to 200 megabits per second with relatively okay signal strength. So it's still enough for a YouTube video, but definitely slower than the rest of the house. This next one is from my living room sofa, where most of my friends and family will be when they come over. The speed is pretty good here as it's close to the router in the DB box, so no one will complain they can't load their TikTok videos. That's all for our network setup. We will link our devices down below so you can compare the models during your own planning. I plan to upgrade the setup in the future, maybe adding a file sharing server or other stuff, and maybe it could be a video on its own if you like this kind of how-to videos. Thanks for taking the time to watch the videos. If you find it helpful, make sure to hit the like button. Comment down below if you are sick of my monotone voice and make sure to subscribe for more. Bye!